here. There we go. We got her now. So Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As we give our tithes and offerings, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, benefits, favorable settlements, interest and income, checks in the mail, finding money, bills paid off, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, estates and inheritance, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills decreased, blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that I have the blessings. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. You know, I remember saying that in the rock church, you know, uh, and it's not changed. God blesses us. When we give back to him, he truly, truly blesses us. So, so let's just give back to him a portion of what he's given to us and give with a joyful heart, right? So, Lord, Father, we just, as we take up these tithes and offerings, Father, Lord, we pray that you just use them to glorify your kingdom, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the air conditioning we have, the soft seats that we have here. Father, and all comes through these tithes and offerings. But most of all, Father, I want, I want these funds also to go out and reach the lost, Father. Lord, I don't care a whole lot about the air conditioning, Lord, but I do care about the lost souls, Father, Lord, that are out there, Lord, needing you, Father. So take this funds, Father, Lord, shake it up and divide it where it needs to be, Father, Lord, that you can call your people home, Father, Lord, and let us be servants, Lord, and well stewards of your, your funds, Father. We just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, so all right, guys, let's get behind the praise and worship team and worship the Lord. Made me laugh. 
you know, I, I feel like i got to say something right here. I don't even know what to say, but Lord, just lead me. But what can you imagine a world without our Jesus? Amen. Can you imagine a world without Jesus? I don't know what Sister Mary's going to preach on this morning and teach us about this morning, but I sure don't want to be without Jesus. Amen. And like I said, I really don't know what to say here, but let's just, let's just don't imagine it, okay? Let's just... <laughs> I, I don't want to imagine a world without Jesus. So I know I have him. Do you have him today? Do you have him in your heart today? Then let's just love on him, okay? Let's just love on him. We're going to sing this again. And we're just going to um, let him fill us with him today. I want him. I want to be filled with him this morning. I want the weight of his glory to come down on me today. Because... I can imagine a world, there was a world time when I was without Jesus. And I know that there's a time when you guys were without Jesus too. And you can kind of picture that in your head. But I don't want to anymore. Because I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live back there anymore. I don't need to live back there anymore. Because Jesus is, he's mine now. Hallelujah. And I am his. And I abide in him. So, you just... Let him come in here and fill your heart today and just begin to love on him and just let his presence flow. We want his presence to flow in here so that you, not only you are getting the benefit from it, but those around you are getting the benefit from it too. You know, when we come into God's house and, and you know, I, I wasn't feeling the best this morning when I came in. But I decided that, you know, I want the weight of his glory and his Amen. presence in my life. And so I, I, and I wanted to give that to everybody else around me. Lord, I want them to see Jesus in me. So let's let Jesus, let the people see Jesus in us as we worship him. And just lift your hands and just be free. Be free in the Holy Spirit this morning. Isn't it wonderful that we can be free? We can have this place to worship him this morning. Let's sing this one more time. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting. Like without a sail. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Oh, don't turn.
sing it to him this morning. Let's sing Because He Lives. Can we pull that one up? Because He Lives. You know, I look out there and, you know, that song talks about being revived. You know, and I'm the world's worst. Don't ever think that I'm sitting there judging anybody sitting there because I'm the world's worst. When I'm sitting back there in the back, it's hard to get excited sometimes. But I want you guys to understand what we have to be, have to be excited about. The Lord Jesus has given us life, a life of abundance. He's given us blessings. Amen. But most of all, he's given us eternal life. That's right. I know this body is under a curse and it hurts. I see this constantly. But he has promised us a new body one day. But we have to endure right now. And we can have that same joy that we're going to have then. Amen. right now That's right. but we have to stand and claim our victory in jesus Amen. name because right now we have things coming against us Amen. satan is the ruler of this world 
So we are fighting against demons and principalities of this world that are in this place. And don't think that they're, they're not scared to come into a sanctuary Amen. at all. But I can tell you right now, by the attitude you guys have, the praise that we work, uh, dream, bring in from the glory of God, they cannot come in the glory and the presence yeah, of Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. Amen. So when we are truly worshiping the Lord with our heart, soul, and mind, they have no place. That's they have right. no right to be in this place. Hallelujah. So we're going to praise him right now. And yeah. the, you, you guys have done amazing but I just think that let's just focus let's on him and sing because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So let's all stand up if you can. I know you heard stuff, but let's just throw our hands up and worship the Lord for this joy. I can face you tomorrow. Lord, we love you. Hold your future today, because if you don't, you need to seek him and find him. this morning father god our hearts are, are heavy father lord because of what the united states father lord this is a free country father lord but we are lacking lacking the church is coming up short father lord and i'm just praying lord for your strength and your power father lord that your church may rise up in the united states of america yes. lord that we can take our country back from yes. the one. father we are we are patriots Father God, we love the United States of America, and we love you, Father Lord. And Father, you said, Lord, that if we pray for our nation, Lord, you will heal our land, Father. And we are praying and seeking right now, Lord. Father, Lord, we have had victories over this abortion, Father God, but we are trusting and wanting to see more. We want to see a revival in the world, Lord, that you may change people's lives, Father Lord. And then we want to see your glorious return, Father, when you come home. Lord, to bring us to you in the air, Father. And, Lord, we are going to stand on that. We are going to trust and know that you are God. Yeah. Father, we are your church. Father, help us, Lord. Anoint us, Lord, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ yes. throughout the world, Father. And we just give you thanks this morning, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this refreshing and reviving, Lord. Father, And just renew us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, God is so good and he's so faithful. And, and sometimes we've got to, you know, not necessarily have a cheer section or whatever, but sometimes we've got to be motivated. We've got to get, you know, I do. I really do. I got it because sometimes the world just comes against us. Our own mind is a battlefield. So, But I'm not going to preach. I'm excited to see what Sister Mary, if you would like to come up here. And give us the word this morning. Give her a round of applause. Amazing lady. Lord, she is filled with the spirit. And she loves the Lord with all of her heart, soul, and mind. And she has a bag. So it may be good or bad. I know my wife. I tell you. All right. Praise God. This is fine. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Um, that, that right here is fine. I need, to get, uh, I need to be looking at everybody right now. 
No, praise God. I'm so grateful to be here today, and I'm so grateful that, that I can come boldly and preach the Word of God. You know, um, we were singing that song, you know, and, and, you know, I can face tomorrow. No matter what problem we're looking at, you know, I know we've got some funerals looking at us this week. We've got uh, kids traveling. We've got, we just have a lot going on this week, right? And, uh, and every week. But you know what? We know the one. We know the one that's going to get us through today. Into the, You know what? We may not even have it tomorrow. Praise God. I'm ready today. Amen. You know, I, I seen, uh, or I was, uh, I was praying. I've been praying about what to, to preach on and what to talk about. And, you know, uh, he brought to me uh, King David. But you know what? Before King David was King David, he was David. Just David, just a little shepherd boy out there at the sheep. You know, all his, he's the baby. He's the baby of all of Jesse's kids, okay? And, uh, you know, I kept reading. It's a, it's a long story about King David. When you get to look at it, you're like, well, I'll just whip this right out. Well, no, you won't. Because <laughs> David had a lot going on in his life, Okay? When, when, uh, when Samuel came and said, in, if, if you want to go along with me, we're going to start out in 1 Samuel 16, 11 through 23, but we'll see, where, we'll see what I do. Okay, we don't, I don't know what exactly is going to happen here, but 16, 11 says, And Samuel said unto Jesse, and I can just see Samuel coming in. You know what I mean? Because I try to visualize and make them make these people real in my mind. So can you just see Samuel coming in and go, um, is this it? Is these all the kids you got? I mean, he probably didn't use bad grammar like I did, but he said, and Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. You know, so basically he's saying, well, I have one more, but he's busy. He's doing the least of the work that we have to do. He's doing the, he's doing the least littlest job we have taking care of them sheep, you know. Because, you know, his older brothers were soldiers. His older brothers were, you know, well, they worked for Saul, right? Well, Samuel said unto uh, I mean, Samuel said unto Jesse, "Send and fetch him. Go get him, for we will not sit down till he come here. So we're not going to sit down until until you bring him in here from the fields. Go get him." So I don't know how far away that was. I don't know how long they had to wait for King David to come in, or David. Sorry, it was just David. Okay, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. So, so what do we learn about David right there? Okay, he's a sheep herder. And he was a pretty good looking feller, from what it says. And he had a beautiful countenance. Have you ever been in the presence of someone who had a beautiful countenance? And all you wanted to do was be in their presence because they're happy. They're upbeat. Whoa, I can't wait to go see so-and-so. They are just fun, happy to be around them, full of life. I mean, who wants to go see somebody who's like, I, I'm here. I showed up with all my bags. Oh, I guess we'll do have church. Um, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. So he says, then in 13, he says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The Spirit of the Lord came on the David the shepherd boy. Do you think that, that, that the Spirit of the Lord, if he would come on a shepherd boy, who probably came in there stinking, I don't know if y'all have ever taken care of sheep. 
But it's a hot, dirty job, stinky. You know, I'm sure he was sweaty, nasty. But he wasn't afraid. When they said, David, David, your dad wants you to get in here. Come on, hurry up. You're holding everybody up. Hurry up. I can just see David busting up in that tent. Like, what? what's happening? What's, what is it? How's everybody? You, got, you know, he gets to come in out of the field. He got to come in and see what everybody else was doing. Right? Praise God, that's how I feel when we come into the house of God. What's everybody else been doing? You know what? Are you going to sit there? This is this. This was something the Lord has impressed upon me many times when I've been in church and I thought, well, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm not feeling it. Just like Brother Kevin said, or, or, or maybe it was uh, Sister Brenda said, I didn't really feel like being here today. But you know what? You come anyway. You come anyway and you come expecting. Because let me tell you something, there ain't no rock going to stand in my place. There ain't no rock going to serve and worship God over me. I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to be glad in it. Woo! Glory to God. I can just see David come running up in there. What, what is it, Dad? What happened? You know? Maybe, maybe he thought, oh, something's happened to one of my brothers. What, what's, you know, I know there's a war. I know there's a battle and stuff happening. I know things are going on. Right? But, this, so, but then he, he was anointed. He was anointed. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Wow. Glory to God. And, and Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Oh, but the spirit of the Lord departed. I missed this one. I missed 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Let me tell you something. How many of you have been going along? I talked to Brother Cliff this morning a little bit in our classroom. How many of you have ever just been like a stay-at-home mom or, or maybe you're self-employed and you work out by yourself and you can just dig that ditch and get it done or you can be that mom and you're in your house and you're the boss of your house. Them dishes get done when you want to. That gets done. I'm taking care of that. But then you go out into the workplace. Okay? So you can just praise God. Praise God for this sink and dirty dishes. Glory to God. Bless this house. You can talk to God out loud with no reproach. Nobody bothering you once the kids go back to school. But you can, you can be you. You can talk to God. You have that private time with God. But if you work in the, in the, out in the workforce, you're looking at a different, you have different obstacles to overcome. Right? And so as, as, as David, you know, becomes anointed, Saul becomes annoyed. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of, of what Saul feels for David. You know, but he, it says he loved him. If you read on about it, it says he loved him. But what happens to us when, when some of our friends start rising up? Maybe, maybe your friend that, that came to work after you did is now getting that promotion that you've been praying for for years because they, because they got a degree or they got a letter behind their name or because, because, well, maybe they were just better at it. But you feel wronged because you've put in the work. You, you feel like I'm the one that should be receiving all of these, these gifts and these wonderful things. I've been there. I know. And you think, I have worked so hard for these people, and they don't have any respect for me whatsoever. You know, so there was, there was people that felt this way about David. Who is this little pipsqueak that sits out here in the field all day, sitting around under a bush doing nothing? Who gives him, what gives him the right to be anointed? How come he has jumped up over me and now he is something special? I've known him since he was a kid. There's nothing special about him. Right? How many of you heard that? Because how many of you can't wait to get you in the back over there and go, look, come here, i got to tell you this. Can you believe that just happened in church? 
But that's what's, that's what's happening. As we, as we read about David, there's a, you know, we're seeing the outer surface of what they're talking about. But the underneath, the underlying what's going on made things hard for David. But David took it like a future king. Because when that spirit came on Saul, David had to play. They said, send, send for somebody to come and play in the music. Send, I need someone to calm me. Because he had an evil spirit, right? So who did they send for? The most talented heart person they know of. David. So now, David's anointed. It weighs a sheep herder. So he's valuable in the sense to his father that he can work. So he's that. He's anointed by God. The Spirit of God has came on him. And now, he's a musician. And he's good looking. Now, how many people do you think, I am so sick of David. Every time I turn around, David is right there in my face. I'm not getting any credit for anything because of that David dude. Right? I, you see it in the news. The news, will, the news tears people apart. Good people that may not have done nothing to nobody. But see, this is what's fixing to happen to you Christians. Get ready because it's coming. They hate you. The world hates God and they, they're going to hate you too. So, as um, David come in, he got, you know, he's, he could keep, so we know he could play the harp, fight, he was smart, okay? Because in 1 Samuel 18 and 14, it says, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Because, you know, David was young. David had a lot of... Uh, testosterone okay and he's getting poked he's getting poked by all these people around him right because Saul every time this comes on him you know it, ta it tells about Saul throwing the javelin at him so it, I'm sure he's like man this guy he loves me one day and hates me the next day I can't do anything right for this guy but we know the Spirit of the Lord is on David. So we know that the Spirit of the Lord is calming David. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yet his brother... Okay, so then, then Jesse says... Um, I don't know where it is, but I'm going to just go on with it. Jesse says, hey, come here. I want you to go down where that battle's happening. Because they, they sent... David went back to work. He's back, he's back being a shepherd. Okay, but Jesse's all his kids is gone and he says listen I need you to go down there in the middle of that battlefield and I need you to take this food to your brothers and 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 basically what he was saying was go find out what's happened to your if your brothers are okay I need to know that that my kids are all right go take this food and go down in the middle of that battlefield so David he's like all right praise the Lord I get to go to town I'm gonna take my bag and I'm going to town well, he gets there, and what happens is there's a lot of hubbub going on. So David, he's, I could see him unpacking in that bag, getting his food out, ready for his brothers. Well, while this is all happening and taking place, guess who steps out? Goliath. And he starts taunting them. The Bible says he did it every day. Same time of the day, every day. Come on. Send your best champion out here because I'm going to kill him too. Because they were, they were, the Bible says they were on one hill and Goliath was on another hill and there was a valley between them. And Goliath every day come out and just, and they were afraid. They were terrified of this man. What does it say? He was like 6'9", I believe, if you, if you look it up. And, and he's got full armor. They said his spear weighs 15 pounds. 
or something. It was shekels, but I looked it up. I've Googled it. But anyway, so you're talking about a mighty warrior. They, this is their mightiest Philistine warrior, and he is, he is out there, and he is, come on, you sissies. I mean, I can just hear him, you know, just. And and you and the and the and the people that are backing him are over there going, yeah, I'll bring, you know, come on, agging it on. And then David is like, and he's sitting back here and they're talking about it, and he's like, hey, who's gonna go take care of that guy? Made his brother furious. His oldest brother said, hey, don't you have some sheep to keep? And there's something you need to be doing. What are you doing out here bothering us? Think about that. Because how many times have, have we been there? Who is this person coming over here telling me my business? Right? And David said, went to Saul and said, I'll go out there and kill him for you. I'll, I ain't afraid of this. He said, who is that uncircumcised Philistine talking to? Is he talking to us? He was, he was enraged that his army was sitting. Aren't you guys God's army? You don't hear that guy talking to you, taunting you, telling you what he's going to do to you? You don't hear that guy? So he goes to Saul. And Saul's like, mm, I don't know. You're not, you know, you're not really ready for that. He's like, I'm not afraid. You know why he wasn't afraid? He was anointed. The power of God was upon him. And he knew the power of God. He felt it right, rushing through him, much like I feel like Samson did. Because Samson, you know, was just a regular guy until the power of God fell on him. Then he could tear this building apart. So, you know, his brothers, everybody's like, I can't believe David come out of them. Oh, he's such an embarrassment. Now all my friends are making fun of me because my little brother's over here blowing up and mouthing off. You know, no joke. This is exactly, you know, there was a lot more going on than they got all written down right here. And so he said, I'll do it. Send me. I'll be your champion well, they put his armor, Saul said, go get, put the armor on. You know, and David was not short. The Bible does not talk about David. It, it's, I think he was like six, seven or something. I mean, he is not a short dude. But according to a lot of their standards, he wasn't as tall as everybody else. So, I mean, this was, these are large people. But he puts the armor on. Well, David don't know nothing about armor. He hadn't been, he hadn't been trained. He hadn't been trained to carry a spear or walk in this, this stuff weighing him down. I mean, I could just see him, and they're probably like, he can't even walk. He can't even walk right. Look at him. Look at him. And then what are they going to do? You know, I'm sure they just wanted to, to wrap him up and send him home. You know, but he is... Power that was coming had to be coming off of him in his voice. And Saul knows the power of God. You know, and so he said, okay, go ahead. Go out there, let's see what you can do. Because I don't really think that Saul cared if David died or not. So he sends him out there. And he stood, or that was, wait, let me skip over here. Because David was the youngest, you know, he, he wasn't trained, he wasn't ready. So God said he was ready. Okay? So his brother and all his family wanted to put him in his place. Does that not happen to you sometimes? Do people not try to put you in a box? Do they not try to say, you need to, you need to hush. Let, the, let these people talk. Don't, don't do that. You are who God made you to be. And if you will let the power of God move through you like it did David, like it did Samson, 
like it did in Moses, you can do all of those things and more. All of them. There's not one thing standing in your way that you can't do. There's not one problem that you can't overcome. Goliath was a problem. Goliath was a mountain. I mean, why didn't, I, I thought to myself, why didn't the armies just rush him when he come out there? You know, because you're not seeing it all in your, you're not seeing it all. That's, the, Lord, the Holy Spirit is like, listen, <laughs> you can't see it. These are just a few words to describe one instance of what was going on at that, at that valley. I mean, there was so much death in the Old Testament. There was so much blood flowing in the Old Testament. And David was one of the bloodiest kings in the Bible. But he still had a heart of God because he went when God said go. He didn't say, you know what, they've insulted me and I'm going to rip their city apart. He waited for the Lord. Now, I'm sure there were times he was like, Lord, please turn me loose on these people. Please turn me loose. Just let me, just let me have them out an hour. Do what I want to. But as long as he stayed in the will of God, he won every battle. He overcame every obstacle that came his way. And praise God, that's, you know, that's, that's what I want to get across to everybody today is, you know, come in here ready to do battle. So when we do battle in here, and you do battle on these, when you go out there, you don't have any obstacles that can't be moved. Because if you're not prayed up, it's just like Brother Kevin said, they will come in here and sit down right next to you. And they will bug you, and they will say, oh, oh. I can't stand that song. I don't know why they sing that song every time. I don't, oh, I don't know why that that person has to pray so loud. I don't understand. Oh, why do they wear that same outfit? These are, these are little bitty things I'm talking about. There's way bigger ones than some of you are sitting there thinking about. But every little thing that Satan can take and say, Brother George, I'm going to make your knees hurt so bad today, you're not going to get outside. Every little thing that he does, he attacks you. But you know what? You have the power and the authority to take over your body. He, we have dominion over sickness. We have dominion over this earth. He gave us dominion. Did he not? Praise God. And that's what, that's what it feels like. I don't know. Have, have any of you just ever just felt like, whoo, the, the Spirit of God is just... Woo! You can't cut it. You can't cut it with a knife. You can't, you, you can't get out from under it. He's got a job for you to do, and it's all over you. And you, He is not going to let you sleep until it's done. Glory to God. If you don't have that, you need to hit this altar, and you need to be praying for that. Lord, put a burden on me for somebody. Put somebody on my heart that I can't sleep until I get them saved. And don't stop praying. It may, not, it may be that you never come face to face with that person. You may never know that person's name. But pray for the desire to want to pray. To want to get somebody saved. To want to see souls not go to hell. He, glory to God. If the power of God fell on you, everybody in this church right now, we couldn't even get up. But the power of God fell on David, and he went out, and he looked Goliath right in the eye with his little, mm -hmm, little slingshot. And I'm sure that Goliath was like, are you kidding me? I come out here every day in the heat, in this garb, and you're going to send that out here? And you know David's brothers were like, I'm going home. I've got to get a hold of Dad. I can't believe he sent him up here to embarrass us and to cause us shame. Right? <laughs> Nobody was laughing when it was all over with. Everybody was in shock. Because David's little bitty tiny stone hit its mark. That's what we got to do. We got to hit our mark. 
And if you're not walking and talking and breathing and sleeping for Christ, you have failed. Because we're not doing enough, people. We're not. Who wants to stand before Jesus with what all you've done now? I want you to think about that. I heard a man the other day talk about he had a, near, a death experience. And he said when he stood before the Lord in this experience, he was ashamed. He said the piece of paper was no bigger than a restaurant menu of what he had done for God. And we think it can be a little child. Anything that you do for God's kingdom, to bring people in, to do your best for, that's what he's looking for. He said, that's my warrior. That's my soldier that I'm sending out to slay the dragon. Because we're all folding up. Everybody's folding up. Look at the news. All you hear about is the horrible things that are going on in the world. Satan has stood up. And it's time to make him sit down. Now he may, we know what's coming. But he, he has no power and authority in my presence. And not because of me, but because of the God that lives inside of me. I know where my power and my authority comes from. And I want to be just like David to say, give me that slingshot. He has attacked my family, my friends, my loved ones. Enough. Enough is enough. We, we see many people just sitting back, just, just so saturated with drug abuse, alcohol abuse, poverty, all of these things that are, we can do something. We can do something. You know what a prayer warrior is? And people will think, Oh, uh, you know, I see people say all the time, I'm praying for you. They say it on Facebook all the time, I'm praying for you. You're in my prayers, you're in my thoughts. Are you? Did that cross your mind again after you read whatever I said? Did you really go to battle for me? Because this ain't lifting. The problem ain't fixing itself. I'm praying, and I called out to y'all to pray with me, and it ain't changing. Right? Somebody's not doing their work. So my challenge to all of us is to be prayer warriors. Until the Lord moves you up and out, because he will. When you go to being a prayer warrior, be ready for what God has for you to do next. Because he's going to be like, okay. Are you Okay, I, you learned how to pray. I got some, some other things for you to do. Saddle up. We're riding it. We're right at dawn. <laughs> I've been watching some westerns this weekend, sorry. But, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Because I want to see everybody I know in heaven. Even the ones I'm not crazy about. I want to see them in heaven. You know, what does he say? What does he say? Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Forgive them. Forgive them. Love them. We have to get to that point. You have to drop down on your knees and lay it all out before Christ. And he will take that mess away from you. Praise God. Well, that's really all I have, Brother Kevin. Um, I just feel like, you know, I feel like if there's anybody in here that doesn't know God, on that intimate personal level. I'm not just talking about salvation, people. Salvation, that's easy. Jesus already did the work. That's already done. Right? You're saved. Now what? What's next? What are you going to do now for Christ? I mean, you, we get hungry. Like, oh my goodness, I'm starving to death. I got to get some food. But are you that hungry for Christ? Are you that hungry to, to say, Lord, I'll take up the cross. I'm going to take up my cross, and I'm going to follow you. Are you? Are we willing to do that? We all say, yes, oh, yes. We wouldn't have done what Peter did. We wouldn't have done what Peter did. 
We wouldn't have denied Christ three times. You apparently don't know how sharp the swords were. How many soldiers there were. What these men were capable of. Because what those Christians went through, it's unfathomable. They had a road with crucified people on it. It was not a pretty death. They were terrified. They were terrified of the rulers of that day. They were terrified of those Romans. But you know what? After, after the death and resurrection... And the Holy Spirit come washing in over every one of them. That gave them the power and the authority and the holy boldness that they needed to achieve what they needed to achieve. And we have that same resurrection power. And you have the same callings on your life that they had. He said he called all men to be fishers. You all have a calling. I've heard, you know, people say, oh, I have a calling in my life. We, I, we all do. We all do. We, they all may be different in some way or another, but you, every single one of you sitting out here today has a calling on your life. I've talked about this before, but I feel like it fell on deaf ears sometimes. He's called you to do something. It's time to step up and do it. So what I would ask today is if there's anybody that needs prayer, Anybody that, I mean, you're, you're sick in your body, you're sick in your spirit, you just, you just need something extra from God. Just come on up. Come on up and fill these altars up. Because I'm going to tell you what, when you step out, that's where God meets you. When you step back and you hold on to the things that are not of God, you, you don't get blessed. You don't get, you don't get miracles. Miracles don't happen until you, what'd she do? She grabbed the hem of his garment. If she had not reached out and grabbed the hem of his garment, she would not have been made whole. I need some prayer warriors down here, please, some altar workers. But we have to just keep this in mind every morning when I wake. I'm going to praise his name. I'm going to worship him. Every night when I lay my head down, I'm going to give it all to him and make it new. Because, again, we're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised tomorrow. So if you don't know where you're headed, I want to know before you leave here today where you're headed. But if you would just come on down and we'll just, we're just going to have a prayer time right now. And, and just meet the Lord right here where, where we need to. Just get on your knees and meet God.
This is how we fight our battles, guys. Right up here. You don't have to do it alone. Don't ever think that. I, I know, guys, you are the worst, men. We don't have to fight on our own. There's men here that will pray with you. We're not going to spread your dirty laundry all over the place either. We just want to stand by you and let you know that we support you and we're going to help you in any way we can. So, guys, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mary, for the word that you you put out there. And we thank you that uh, you just gave your life through the Holy Spirit to let it minister to through you. And that, that means so much because... You know, a lot, a lot of preachers get up here and use their own knowledge in their own head and all that, and I can't do that. And I know Sister Mary will probably tell you, too, she, she's, we, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us because I would not be up here without the Holy Spirit ministering through me. But, but I know one thing, that I love you guys. Mary loves you guys. This whole, the church, we love you. We're so glad you come. And pray that the Lord just continues to work in your life. And, and we know everyone out here has family. We have lost loved ones that we want to see their lives changed. But it's going to take prayer. It's going to take fasting. And it's going to, just like Mary says, we got to come up here and fight our battles. We, we've got to turn it over to the Lord. You know, and when you say you're going to pray for somebody, pray for somebody. And if somebody calls you on the phone and says, hey, I need your prayer, don't say, well, I'll pray for you. Even in the Walmart, don't say, well, I'll pray for you. You stop right then and you pray with them right then. And I tell you what, some people, will, it'll freaking plumb out. But I'll tell you what, that's what we do. We are Pentecostals. We are Christians. We love the Lord. When we say we're going to pray for you, we're not embarrassed. We don't care where we're at. We are going to lay hands on you, and we're going to come together and believe that our God is going to make things right. Amen? So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, we'll dismiss. Father, I just give you thanks, Father God, for this time together and you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for filling our cup. I thank you, Lord, for the word. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the Bible that gives us these Lord, just I know, Lord, they, they're facts, Father. They're not fiction. They're stories, Lord. But, but we can use them, Lord, to learn how to uh, worship you and to fight our battles, Father. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, uh, for this word that was put forth. And, Lord, be with us today, Lord. Let us uh, endure this heat, Father. Lord, and, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for it. And we're going to give you thanks in everything, the good and the bad. Lord, and be uh, with us as we come back tonight, Lord, and those that aren't able to be able to make it, those are traveling, and, and Lord, those are sick, Lord, we pray for healing in Jesus' name, Father, and we just give you thanks, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name, amen. All right, remember five.